Test, test, test. Okay, here we go. Okay, if you would, uh, if you can hear me, please indicate in the chat box, please. If you can hear me, please indicate. Ah, oh, good, good. Okay, everybody, please indicate in the chat box if you can hear me. All right, good. Come on, everybody, indicate. We got four. Four out of about seven or eight. Okay, that's good. We've got five there. Okay, all of us uh, have, you know, in the past several years seen stuff in the literature where sugar does not it all affect diabetes okay well we're gonna dispense with that and basically all this is taken out of uh, my uh, diabetes report my master's essay which we get into uh, we go through the whole thing in part four but uh, I want to lay this particular thing to rest so that's what we're gonna do tonight Okay. Okay, can everybody see the screen? How does sugar ingestion affect the diabetic? Can everybody see that? Okay, please indicate in the chat box if you can see the screen. Okay, I need everybody to indicate in the chat box if you can see the screen here. Nobody can see the screen? Okay, can anybody indicate in the chat box if you can see this screen? Can nobody see the screen?
please indicate in the chat box if you can see this screen. Hello, can anybody hear me? Please indicate in the chat box if you can see this screen. Wow. Okay, I'm not getting anybody up oh, there. There we go. Okay. There you go. Okay, now I'm seeing it. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. I, I guess I need to roll it there. Okay. Very good. Okay, how does sugar ingestion affect the diabetic? We're told all the time that sugar ingestion has nothing to do with diabetes. But is that true? Absolutely, it is not true. Aloxin. Insufficient insulin production is induced in animals by the chemicals aloxin and others. Aloxin is created by oxidation in the bleaching of wheat flour and sugar to make it white by combining chlorine dioxide, benzoyl peroxide, or aging with xanthine in these foods. This caused the beta cells of the islets of Langerhans of the pancreas, which secrete insulin, to swell and finally degenerate. This decreases or destroys the ability of cells to secrete insulin. Okay, how many of you knew about this? Let's see in the chat box how many of you knew about this. So the bleaching of flour and sugar, That same chemical that's produced there, in, they use it to induce diabetes in test animals to see if they can cure it. And this is what we're fed. I mean, this is the ridiculousness of this. It's been known for decades. And, you know, you know this is something to me that's pretty sickening uh, because the general public doesn't know this at all. This is why I think that you know, I need to get this out so that you can tell your patients about this. The bleaching of flour and sugar induces diabetes by destroying the beta cells of the islets of Langerhans. Okay. Okay, insulin sensitivity. Insulin sensitivity is decreased by excessive fatty acids or de triglycerides in the blood. This may be accomplished by excessive sugar ingestion. But increased by... Okay, please, please mute. Okay, whoever's on there, please, please mute. Please mute yourself. Whoever just joined, please mute yourself. Whoever is on there, please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. Thank you. Okay, insulin sensitivity is decreased by excessive fatty acids or triglycerides in the blood by giving excessive sugar ingestion but the sensitivity is increased by complex carbohydrate ingestion and high fiber ingestion. So high complex carbohydrate with the fiber. So like whole potatoes, for example, with the skins, whole grains, et cetera, et cetera, that has the fiber with it helps. Now this is not what we've been told. What we've been told is, hey, any type of carbohydrate is bad. It's just not true at all. We go into that substantially in my uh, diabetes essay. 
Reduced insulin sensitivity has been postulated to be the primary step that leads to hyperinsulinemia, then to hypertriglyceridemia. The high level of insulin, which is inhibited from dealing with the sugar, goes to the liver where it's used up by the body in making excess triglycerides. So this decrease in the sensitivity basically uh, makes the body make even more triglycerides. It's a vicious cycle that then causes even more of a problem. Elevated insulin levels in response to glycemic stress are associated with mild maturity onset diabetes and are considered to be one of the earliest detectable signs of diabetes. So you got two different things. The bleached flour and sugar destroy the islets of Langerhans. But even the non-bleached sugar of any kind, when you have a high enough level, elevates the triglycerides and causes problems with insulin sensitivity and makes excess triglycerides. Growth hormone. Growth hormone is demonstrated in milk and is not destroyed by pasteurization. Milk called growth hormone because it's loaded with it because they put those tags and we talked about this last week on on the ears of uh, the cattle cause them to grow because of the B12 uh, that's produced by the uh, the antibiotics and sucrose combined are diabetic diabetogenic. So basically, we combine the milk from our cattle that have those diabetics, the growth hormone that is not destroyed by pasteurization with the sucrose. So here we are, we're eating cereal with sucrose, and a lot of it has sucrose in it on top of that. For the sugar, we put milk on our cereal, makes you diabetic. So those combined, plus elevated triglycerides from the sugar, plus destroying the islets of Langerhans. Here we have three different ways where we're producing diabetic or diabetes in people. Okay. Serum uric acid. Serum uric acid was found to be significantly higher in young women when they consumed a diet, a diet high in calories from sucrose as opposed to starch. Men and women showed significantly higher fasting serum uric acid when they consumed the diet high in amount of calories from sucrose as opposed to starch. The fructose moiety of sucrose appears to be responsible for increase in the blood uric acid. So back in the 1980s, I don't know how many of you were in practice at the time, when they said, oh, here, we're not going to give you sucrose. Buy our fructose because that's a whole lot better for you. I knew this back then. I'm going, ha, yeah, no, it's not because it's still causing a problem. First of all, you're bleaching it. Second of all, you're causing uric acid issues. Okay? So, but wait a minute. I thought uric acid was from alcohol, shellfish, maybe red meats. Okay? But no, it's also sucrose. Wow. How many of you knew that elevated sucrose came, uh, caused elevated uric acid? How many of you knew that? Let's see that in the discussion chat box here. Okay. One knew it. One doesn't know it. 
Come on, let's chalk it here. Nope, didn't know it. Didn't know that. That's right. It's good. We're learning stuff here. Now, if somebody asks whether the uh, the starches are cooked or all, usually when they're talking about any type of food, it's cooked. Okay? Unless it specifically says raw, uh, which we talked about, you know, in previous things. Okay? Chromium. Sugar contains almost no chromium, and sugar leads usually leads to a loss of body chromium because of the depleting effect of glucose. Upon feeding pure glucose or sucrose, blood sugar is elevated. Insulin then elevates, then serum chromium increases. The chromium then travels to the kidneys where 20 to 30 percent is excreted. Diabetic individuals excrete chromium more rapidly than in their urine than non-diabetics. Chromium acts at the cell membrane, facilitating the entry of glucose into your cells. So chromium is a good thing because it helps take the glucose out of the blood and into the cell. Chromium is ineffective without insulin. And the effectiveness of a given dose of insulin can be enhanced by 50 to 100% by addition of chromium into the system. Now, is that all it takes? No. Though certain foods had a higher concentration of chromium, the amount of chromium with biological value was many times higher in certain foods. Now, I'm going to tell you the highest amount by far of any foods in the type of chromium, which is trivalent chromium, which is the glucose tolerance factor, is in brewer's yeast. So anytime I get anybody with either a low or high blood sugar, I always give them brewer's yeast, tell them to take half teaspoon in the morning, half teaspoon in the evening, while we're correcting the other aspects of their issue. There is a substance secreted from the liver in response to a meal which sensitizes tissues to insulin called the glucose tolerance factor. The only type of chromium presently thought to uh, be biologically active in the human body is trivalent chromium commonly called GTF, or glucose tolerance factor, and is much better absorbed and utilized than are the single chromium salts. So it's not just putting chromium in, is, is it biologically active is the big thing, okay? So any old chromium doesn't just do the job. Insulin response. Human studies show greater insulin responses following the feeding of glucose or corn syrup with a dextrose equivalent of 42 than after the feeding of sucrose. The simple sugars, glucose, fructose, etc., which are monosaccharides or disaccharides, are absorbed directly from the small intestines and either used as energy after absorption into the body cells converted to glycogen in the muscle or liver cells, or converted into triglycerides in fat tissue or liver cells, which sends the triglycerides through the blood to the peripheral tissue, thus elevating serum triglycerides. Glucose moderately promotes fat production, elevated blood fat, but fructose does much more so by stimulating much more fat conversion in the liver. So remember, fructose can be freestanding just by giving fructose, you know, as a sweetener by itself, or it's in sucrose, which is table sugar. Now, the disaccharide effect. Sucrose, or table sugar, can produce what is called the disaccharide effect. 
Their combination, that of glucose and fructose, will elevate blood fats more than either separately. So the sucrose does a lot more than either of these together. Moreover, feeding simple sugars, especially sucrose, increases both the blood sugar and insulin levels. Because the insulin sensitivity is decreased, the insulin is there but cannot function properly. Okay, so you can have diabetics with simultaneous hyperinsulinism and hyperglucose uh, in the blood because of the lack of sensitivity to draw it, drive it in. Sucrose may be an, an etiologic factor in genetically predisposed diabetics by causing hyperinsulinemia, high fasting blood sugar, peripheral insulin resistance, and retinal and renal vascular complications. Okay, so some of the worst complications are in the retina, and we talked about that uh, before, you know, about both of those, and uh, the function of the kidneys brought in by sucrose in genetically predisposed diabetics, i.e. type 1 and type 2. Okay, Weight gain induced in humans by the intake of excess calories increase serum triglycerides when sucrose as opposed to starch consumption was also increased. So weight gain itself is caused a hyper triglyceride when use a lot of table sugar as opposed to just starches. Okay. Here again, there is this differentiation of starch versus the sugar itself. Okay. And we're basically told, hey, all starch is bad. It isn't. There's a big differential here going on. And especially when it's cooked, especially when it does not have uh, the fiber in with it. In human studies in which the intake of sucrose has been either eliminated or reduced, significant decreases in fasting serum triglycerides uh, occurred. High levels of blood fats interfere with the ability of the body to use insulin. Okay. If one lowers them, the body's use of insulin returns to normal. Controlled hypertriglyceridemic patients consume greater amounts of sucrose, alcohol, and total calories than controlled normal triglyceridemic patients. Okay? <clears throat> okay. Now we're kind of at the end of this, but this is a whole lot to digest here so to speak. So, how many of you knew about this? You know, this is basically showing you just how simple sugars, most especially fructose and especially sucrose, has a huge effect on genetically predisposed diabetes and inducing diabetes and destroying the pancreas, the beta cells of the pancreas, when there is bleaching of the sugar and of the flour. Okay? Okay, so everybody learn a lot today? Anybody have any specific questions about this? You can take this, in, uh, this stuff right here and take it to your patients and say, hey, look, you know, this is a, a big problem. And uh, your patients with uh, uh, arthritis, you know, trying to get people off of allopurinol, say, hey, it's not just the red meats, not just the alcohol, not just the shellfish, sugar is causing a problem. Okay, does 
white salt bleach destroy the body? Uh, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> the, the biggest problem with salt uh, is the granulation of the salt. Uh, the oldest societies in the world use salt, but they, they basically use um, lumps of salt. And they put it in their beverages, they, they put it in their cups, they pour the beverage over it, whatever naturally leaches out is what they get. They put it in their stew pots, whatever naturally leaches out is what they get. And I took care of people that worked in Morton um, salt factories. So basically I said, well, you know, how do they produce it? And they say, okay, we're down there, we're scraping it from the bowels of the earth and we granulate it, we send it slurried up and it hits a rotating disc heated up to 4,500 degrees, hits that disc and immediately the water evaporates and it takes it down onto con conveyor belts. So basically the high heat in the presence of oxygen and the super amount of uh, surface area causes a lot of free radical oxygens to go onto the salt, the granulated salt. And I don't care whether it's sea salt or processed salt or whatever it is, when it's granulated, it has a super amount of surface and it has a lot um, of oxidation, free radical oxygens on it. This is why uh, when you have salt on streets and on sidewalks, it reduces the life of the, of the, uh, the street and the sidewalk to about a fourth to a fifth of what it normally is. Now, I've been in Dallas here for uh, basically uh, 25, 26 years now, actually. And one year we had... Uh, uh, a bunch of ice storms when I was here. And in the Dallas Morning News, it showed they used to store it under underpasses. Okay? Real salt, Celtic salt, it doesn't matter. Okay? If it's granulated, it's going to cause a problem. Okay? Now, it showed that they scraped the salt off this underpass and they scraped out around where it was, the cement was around a metal pier. And it had eaten through all the cement and was eating into the, the metal pylon that was supporting the bridge. That was in the Dallas Morning News. I mean, it's scary. And this is why salt is associated with, you know, virtually every uh, degenerative disease in the body. It's because it's not so much because of the salt, it's because it's granulated and because it's carrying all those free radical oxygens. Okay? Okay, does anybody else have any questions over anything that uh, we covered today? Okay, now I'm going to go on to... Uh, let's see here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, basically, we've heard this term of evidence-based medicine forever, and we don't really know what it is. So, I provide this for you, and this is right off, off the ACA website. And they got it from the British Medical Journal, Okay. So basically what it means is <clears throat> you see all of the refer references from studies plus you combine it with your own observations in practice. And that is evidence-based and best practices. It's both of those together. Okay? So don't think it's one or the other. It's both of them together. And we provide this for you so that you can see that and have the evidence of it.
Okay, we have T-taps part one, two, and three. And the first three videos are out. They're the stuff that are in my seminars, plus some, okay? And got another three or four weeks, we should have uh, part four edited and out also. Now, if you don't have these, oops. Sorry, I'm plugging myself. If you don't have these, uh, post-production, uh, it's $500 that will make it available to you for $250 for any of these, okay? Uh, you got to do it the next couple of days. And you get any one of those for a full year's viewing, including any upgrades. And so uh, you can call me at 469-995-9907 or go to tstapcenter.com. Go to the seminar you want. Fill out film where it's asked requested location. Type in film and your phone number, then click on the down arrow by 395, choose the 250, and you can get it there. So what are they about? TTAPS Part 1 is about uh, very light touch and minimal amount of scar tissue in the skin. Uh, for example, I had a doc that's been using that off the film on shingles. He had an older woman who'd had it for a lot of years and a lot of pain in her face. And we show how to do that, for example, with a lot of other things. He said she didn't like the treatment, it took several minutes, but it totally got rid of the pain. It's been several months now, it hasn't recurred. And so we show you how to get somebody off a of cane or a walker, one or two visits or standing out of a wheelchair just a few visits, it's, if it's because of weakness or paralysis. Immediately restore significant range of motion. Understand how reciprocal innervation can immediately help restore function in different parts of the body. We show you how to correct foot drop in a visit or two. We show you how easy it is. Cogwheel rigidity of arm and leg from... Uh, Cerebral palsy from stroke. You can get the rigidity out in a matter of seconds. You know, even if people have had it for years, we've shown it in seminars. People don't believe it when they see it. All of this fulfills the evidence-based and best practices. So you take somebody with fibromyalgia, get rid of it in seconds. Sciatica, herniator bulging disc. All this is demonstrated by normal orthopedic and neurologic uh, tests. You know, it's just not something that you're going by symptoms. Uh, this is verified by the test. Unoperated rotator cuff, frozen shoulder, regional pain syndrome or RSD, burning tongue or mouth, burning pain in the lower extremities, upper extremities, genitals, female cycle, cyclical menstrual pain, Cranial nerve sy symptoms shown by nystagmus, strabismus, Weber's, hearing loss, differing frequencies, tinnitus, uh, any of the tunnel syndromes, thoracic outlet syndrome, uh, verified by Phelan's, reverse Phelan's, Tinnels, Addison's, for example, cold or burning hands or feet, Renaud syndrome, uh, loss of vibration sense, feet and toes, Dizziness, vertigo, positive pinwheel test, bladder leakage, vaginal prolapse, numbness in hands and feet, drop transverse and cuboidal arches, hyper and polyhydrosis, ALS, Guillain-Barre, MS symptoms, Parkinson's symptoms, seizures, much, much more. And if you go on uh, to the website, you can see testimonials of doctors who've gotten the results on the patients and patients themselves. And it's just stunning how quickly you can do that. This is not reflexology, AK, CRT, 
PNT, TBM, transverse friction massage, spinal reflex therapy, therapy, contact reflex analysis. It's totally unique, but it is based on known tenets of acupuncture, trigger point therapy, reflexes, and neurology. It is found in laws and tenets in Dorland's Illustrated Medical Dictionary, Chusage Neurophysiology, Guyton's Textbook in Medical Physiology, and others taught in all CCE accredited chiropractic colleges. Treatment effects are verified by standard orthopedic and neurologic exams. I am published JMPT, Chiropractic Economics on Techniques Being Taught. I'm a former adjunct faculty member, postgraduate division, Texas Chiropractic College. By the way, my courses are PACE approved. And so any of uh, 32 different states right now, it's automatic approval whenever you take one of my seminars, okay? And we're in Ohio for part three this coming weekend and the next. And uh, we're going to uh, North Carolina for three weekends after that, excepting the weekend after um, after Thanksgiving, we're taking that off. Then we'll probably be in Minnesota, okay? TTAPs part two. Now, when you've gotten rid of uh, basically reflexes, then we address dense scar tissue outside the joints, and that's what part two is about. Uh, the first four hours of this is actually a continuation of part one. And first thing we do is we uh, show you how to muscle test over 200 muscles easily in less than 10 minutes, lightly touch someone on one muscle, immediately all the muscles come strong. The only uh, exception to that is if you got extreme atrophy in muscle, it'll take a while longer to come along, of course. This saves you a lot of time going from muscle to muscle in applied kinesiology. Okay, it's quite astounding when you see it happen. We show you how to do it right in the seminar on your partner. Doesn't matter if you got three weak muscles or 53. It just doesn't matter. It happens just immediately. Then we show you how to palpate the whole body. Find one spot, lightly touch it like that immediately. You go back and you palpate and all the pain's gone. The only exception being if there's a lot of inflammation in an area, immediately that pain will go down, but it takes a while for that inflammation to settle down. And that saves you from going from trigger point to trigger point to get results. So it really hypes your results very quickly. Okay. Then we show you how to, in a fourth about a fourth of the time rehab patient from what you're norm, uh, normally used to. Then we show you how to uh, basically address scar tissue normally in one visit with a lot less effort on your part, a lot less pain to the patient normally in one visit, very few exceptions. So this is quite different from example, ART, which tells you right in the seminars that it takes four to six visits to get the scar tissue out of a muscle. Graston, six to 10 visits. You have all those expensive tools. Transverse friction massage, 10 to 20 visits. It's right there in Syriac's manual. One visit, a lot less effort on your part, a lot less pain to the patient, it helps you get them well a whole lot quicker that way, okay? So basically it helps you get rid of all these different athletic injuries and basically that carries right over into your practice too, all the same things. So hamstrings, ankle, wrist, golfers, tennis elbow, rotator cuff, uh, knee problems, turf toe, shin splints, chondromalacia patella, weak ankles, trick knees, plantar fasciitis, neuralgia parasthetica, 
bronchitis, asthma, gagging, esophageal spasm, reflux of esophagitis, TMJ syndrome, migraine headaches, chronic whiplash, uh, tendonitis, bursitis, adhesive capsulitis, frozen shoulders, Dupuytren's contracture, trigger finger, Oshkid slaughters, chronic fever and sore throat, scar tissue acupuncture, old fractures, chronic pain, bone and sclerotomal pain, fibromyalgia, burning pain, resistant sciatica, spondylolisthesis, necessity of using a cane or walker again, fibrous ankylosis of joints, chronic shingles pain, arthritic finger and toe joints, unadhere organs from each other and stimulate circulation and lymph flow, diaphragmatic and accessory breathing muscle function, endonasal, including balloon nasoplasty, eustachian tube techniques for chronic sinusitis, chronic migraines, true eustachian tube deafness, Meniere's syndrome, female cyclic, cyclical pain, vaginal prolapse, dizziness and vertigo, dropped arches, unexplained chest pain, all of these uh, so-called uh, genetic issues, we can help reduce that, get rid of a lot of them. Ankylosing spondylitis, seizures, we show you how to stop a seizure in its tracks 15 seconds and keep it from coming back. Herniated bulging disc, foot drop, hearing loss, different frequencies, etc., etc. And again, this is totally unique. We show you how to get it done in short order. Now, so part one deals with reflexes alone, minimal scar tissue in the minimal scar tissue in the skin. Second is dense scar tissue outside the joints. So now part three is dense scar tissue inside the joints. The first thing we do in part three, and this is adjusting manipulation mobilization of extremity, cranials, and vertebra. Okay, so we show you how to palpate the paraspinal vertebra in tension. And we ask the person with most of that to come right up to the front. And they'll go, oh yeah, tense, ouch, 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 ouch. We show you how to find one vertebra, lightly tap it like that, wait about 10 seconds, you go through the paraspinals, the pain and tension is gone. And so it's very quick, and this is to get rid of the compensatory subluxations. So now you can deal with the primary subluxations, which has a lot of inherence in it. Now I've taken care of over 40,000 patients from all 50 states and 97 foreign countries, over 3,000 athletes, over 800 of which were professional. 12 professional athletic teams, Three of them foreign national. I was the first chiropractor invited to treat athletes. The NFL run for daylight fast, fastest man competition. And we get rid of all these things, including hallux rigidus, hammer and claw toes, bowed legs, knock knees. Yeah, you can get rid of these very quickly. Uh, all these... Syndromes, bunions, dementias, high arches, flat feet, drop arches, reflux esophagitis, esophageal spasm, hiatal hernia. Now, we'll show you how to, for example, and this should have um, uh, the different types of dementia and senility on it. We'll show you how to adjust the knee, and within seconds, dementia just starts to go away and people start talking when they haven't talked. Uh, they start recognizing people within seconds. I've done this in front of, front of classes. And, you know, it's just unbelievable. But we show you the anatomy and the physiology from it because we're taking pressure off the brain, stimulating the circulation to the brain. It's quite revealing. Uh, just to give an example um, on cranial techniques, autistic children, uh, gotten them speaking sentences after single words or just squeaking. 
significant demeanor changes. They walk around and they're just angry all the time. And just to give you an example, uh, a doc called me up. He says, I couldn't believe it. This couple brought their five-year-old in and he hadn't spoken a word ever. I did your protocol on the cranials, which is very light touch, takes about three minutes. And he turned around and he says, thank you, doctor. First three words that he'd ever spoken. His jaw dropped, his parents' jaw dropped, just crazy. But this is the stuff that happens. I'm the only chiropractor on the recommended doctor's list for autistic children in the state of Texas because of things like this. And it's very low touch. We'll show you how to easily correct TMJ dysfunction, tinnitus, vision problems, elusive migraines, gland and organ, order, organ dysfunctions. Very quick and to the point. Now, all the first three parts deal with the nervous system. And we tell people when you're, uh, okay, let's say you've been doing intervention for nutrition in different ways and it just hasn't been working. Well, it's probably because for one thing, it's a nervous system issue. And you'll find that when you do parts one, two, and three, that their body chemistry issues just resolve by themselves because it was actually a nervous system issue to start with, okay? And so that really helps with that. Now, part four is pure body chemistry issues. And we do this quite differently uh, from others. Now, kind of the first thing that I ask you to do with any of the seminars is to forget everything you think you know about anything because there's probably a better, quicker way to do it. And we try to show you that. We like quick jaw-dropping responses, okay? And in the biochemistry, we show you how different chemical prog uh, processes occur in negative feedback loops, okay? Just for example, when you have um, electrolyte issues, we're normally told to give people electrolytes. But you see, that's just dealing with the symptom. When you have testosterone issue, low T or zero T, we're taught to give them like precursors of testosterone or something at that level. But basically, androgens control the electrolytes. The androgens, however, are controlled by progesterone. Progesterone by pregnenolone. Pregnenolone is controlled by a feedback loop from estrogen or from vitamin D. So you correct those and the electrolytes self-correct, but the pregnenolone goes to progesterone and DHEA. Neither of those can go to progest or testosterone, and that goes to estrogen. So you can correct lower zero T in a matter of three or four weeks just by knowing about that feedback loop and the precursors. Okay? And so we look at this and we show you that you don't really want to look so much at intervening where the symptom is. It may be two or three steps before or two or three steps after because of that negative feedback loop to get the results. So I have an MS in biology emphasizing human nutrition. I'm a master herbologist. I've been on six medical and scientific boards uh, for major nutrition companies to help formulate things, okay? And, for example, we show you how to, people who've been, I've taken people that have had allergy shots every week for as much as 28 and a half years, got them off the shots. People who have uh, allergic responses to pollen at elevated uh, parts of uh, the year, which basically are at the beginning of spring, the beginning of autumn, the pollen goes up to about four to five times the normal level. We show them how to stop that response so they're not having that response to the pollen. And it works very good. Very little in, uh, intervention. Autoimmune disorders really are not what we've been taught that they are. And we show you how to deal with those. Uh, 
Let me show you how to deal with candida. Get rid of candida, three or four weeks. Chronic fatigue, hormone imbalances, seizures, ulcers, bleeding ulcers, chronic bloody nose. Uh, we'll show you if a woman has been having uh, heavy or prolonged, like eight to 10 days a month, uh, prolonged uh, menses. we show you how to get it down to mild, three or four days where it's supposed to be. I don't care how many years they've had it. We've done it with women that are in their 40s and they had long, heavy periods ever since their menarche at age 12 or 14. So we show you how to do that. Uh, thyroid issues, hormone issues, how to control them with diet, behavior disorders, depression, hyper and hypotension, et cetera, et cetera. We'll show you how to do all that, and that's part four. So this is coming up. It ought to be online, like I said, in about three or four weeks. We finished uh, the filming of it about four weeks ago or so, so we're editing that, so that ought to be out. And again, just go online or give me a call. Uh, we'll get those, we'll get you online for any of those uh, immediately, and then you'll be up for the uh, nutrition one as soon as it comes out. Now let's talk about uh, mentoring. I've been asked uh, to do mentoring, which I've done for about two and a half years now, okay? And here are test testimonials. This doctor is from California. Mentoring program is sec second to none. Wealth of knowledge, wealth of expertise. We show you how to get the practice that you want. Now, just to give you an example, when 911 came around, most practices dip by 30 to 50 percent, some up to 70 percent. My practice went up 1,700 percent. And, you know, right now people are having trouble because of COVID. Uh, doesn't have to be that way. My whole premise is people pay for what they want. And if you can give them a jaw dropping response very quickly, They'll find a way to pay you. I don't care if you're cash, insurance, it doesn't matter. They will pay you. There's no reason why you can't be like me and uh, getting people from all 50 states, 97 countries. They will find you when they start seeing uh, the horrendously good results and how quick you get them. Dr. Bonebreak's mentorship program is the best investment I've ever made. And this is doctor from Cleveland, Ohio. Since mentorship with Dr. Bonebreak, I've seen several improvements in my practice. Patients getting their desired results. This doctor is in Chicago. He's moved to uh, uh, Florida, getting just great results with it. He stayed on. I wasn't sure if I needed a mentor as I already thought my business was very successful. He witnessed immediate results for himself, his brother, and other doctors. His doctor is in Houston. Can't believe how much my practice has changed and grown since I began mentoring with Dr. Bonebreak. Mostly sports chiropractic. His doctor is over in Fort Worth. And he goes into a lot of detail here. I've been in private practice for 23 years. I don't operate a successful sports medicine clinic in Austin. Austin, Texas. These are all super successful guys that not only did they want me to help their practice uh, improve, but a lot of what they take advantage is my expertise in treatment. They say, you know, I'm having a problem with this patient. What would you do? And I flip you over to part one, two, three, or four. Let's go here. Let's talk about it. I say, okay, I would do this, 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 and this. And then we kind of mastermind and we help their patients to get better quicker, okay? Now this is Dr. If you want to make global changes, fine-tune your skills, you want to have Dr. Bonebreak mentor you. And he goes into a lot of depth here. And this doctor is in Lubbock, Texas. He's had a lot of success with it. So 
here you got a lot of doctors, you know, willing to tell you, hey, we're getting results. And I'm going to tell you, do you want, you know, your practice to improve? Don't wait on it. Just do it now. This is the time. So what is the mentoring? I call it preeminence mentoring because it's just pretty good stuff. I've had, I've been uh, 32 practice management, practice consulting, practice coaching, uh, you know, over the years. Got a little bit out of all of them. I took what I didn't like and I said, okay, I'm going to do my own to help people get their practice in. Now, one of the things that I have you do is keep a notebook with you at all times. When you think of something you want help with, write it down. Uh, that way we can address it. I don't want, I don't go in with any preformed ideas because everybody have has different goals. I'm not trying to make your practice into mine. I'm trying to make your practice in what you want it to be. Okay. Everybody is a good fit. Program enables you to become top level, rapid, efficient patient response with scientific methodology found in medical Literature, we want to help you become a nerve and biochemistry expert. Get referrals from everywhere, get paid what you're worth, low stress and family time. Others have committed and changed their lives. Now it's your turn. Let's kind of close your eyes. Image. Just imagine the business of your dreams. Smooth running, plenty of highly satisfied and enthusiastic patients, as much as you want, as many as you want. Financial security, time to enjoy with your family, time to exercise regularly, great health. Three reasons it works for you. You will devote the effort, time, and dedication to get what you want. Charisma isn't necessary. You listen to these talks, you've been to my seminars. I am total monotone. I have no charisma. Uh, my wife says, how do you keep people from falling asleep at your seminars? I said, well, because we stop and we get great results real quick. It keeps them awake. You don't have to have it. I'm not David Singer. My practice is way better than his. You don't need that. So if you think you need charisma, just get that out of your head. You don't need it. Group or one-on-one -on -one mentoring is very affordable. Next step is com commit to be superlative. Go to ttapcenter.com, choose a mentoring level that fits you, commit to change your life. Now, what are the levels? 12-month group mentoring. Here you get one call a week for an hour with a group for 12 months. So 52 calls in a year, just $250 a month or one payment of $2,500. Saves you $500. Bucks. Get a talk about whatever you want. You, uh, any, any particular part of your practice, you see the questions that other doctors have, I answer them, you put your question in there, I answer that, so you get to observe theirs and yours. If in the first three months you step up, uh, you get the benefits of the one-on-one -on -one for a year also. Now, you can also do a six-month one-on-one mentoring. So it's just me and you, 26 calls for an hour each, half a year, Thousand a month or one payment of four thousand saves two thousand dollars. Any aspect of your practice, we just go in there and we say, okay, what do you want? What do you need help with this week? Let's get in there and just concentrate on you. So this is directed directly to you, so we can take care of you individually. Okay. If you want to convert to the one-on-one -on -one for a year. You get all those benefits uh, within the first three months. Now the 12 month one on one. So you get a call a week for 52 weeks. That's for an hour each. So it's a thousand a month or one payment of 8,000 saves $4,000. It includes all four films for a year each. Also when we're done with those films, I have thousands and thousands of testimonials from doctors and patients. We're going to create a link for your website. And <clears throat> you don't have to be on our mentoring to do that. But each one, we're going to create a link for each of the four parts. 
so that your patients and prospective patients, you can direct them there. And now it's not just you saying it, but they're going to go on there and they're going to see doctors saying, hey, these are the great results we got with these patients. Patients saying this, the great results they got with me. So it's not just you saying it, it's you saying, hey, I went to these fantastic seminars. Look at the results that people are getting with it. And when I put stuff like this on my website, I found that I got consistently every month 20 new patients per part. And I also directed existing patients there. And they said, I didn't know you could take care of this. I need to come back in so you can take care of that. So basically, you've got 80 brand new patients, 80 re-ups every month. So that's 160 essentially new patients every month just from doing that. So that's well worth it. But you get that, you know, all for a year for uh, doing the one year one on one. And we're going to have a doctor's blog, 50 a month for each part. That's included also for a year. And so here you're interacting with other doctors and you're seeing the success that they're having with parts one, two, three, and four. Plus, you guys come up with stuff that I don't know about. So you're getting the benefit of interacting with each other with the skills that you've developed as well. So it becomes an even bigger pie there. Now you get everything. Uh, you get also 12 uh, seminars online or in person. So we're going to be sticking these seminars online uh, in all 50 states. It's going to take a while to get that done because we have to tailor those films to do that for the online. But you'll get 12 of those. And we just circle around. We do whatever you need at that moment to get the best results very quickly for anything. Now, if you decide to extend another year when it's coming up, it's just half the price. So it's just 1000 a month for all 12 months or $4,000. Uh, for the whole year. Basically commit now to achieve your dream practice. Don't wait. The longer you wait, the longer it's going to take. Every one of these doctors said, man, I wish I wouldn't have waited. I wish I would have jumped right in there because I could have been where I'm at a year ago if I would have. And that's basically what it is. Business results depend on effort and following directions. So lose your excuses, take consistent action to improve. If you do this, sign up. If not, don't. It's a waste of time. You're the one that has to take action. We give you information and encouragement. You take the action to improve your life. It's just simple as that. Okay? Now, are there any questions about anything? Now's the time to ask it in the chat box over here. So... Anybody have any question about anything we've covered today? Please put it in here. Now's the time to do it. Any questions whatsoever? Now's the time to do it. Now, here is my email. drbbrk at hotmail.com you can contact me anytime. I'll be happy to help you with any given patient uh, you're having trouble with. It's not a problem at all. My phone number is 469-995-9907. And you can fill, uh, you know, Email me, call me if, if I can't get right to you for whatever reason. Uh, uh, I'll get to you just as soon as I can. So, okay. Crackling and static was prevalent throughout competing with your voice. There were some brief welcome breaks free of it. Gosh, I don't know what that is. Um, I'm not sure about that. I've had a couple of complaints with that. I'm not really sure what's causing it. So I have a pretty good microphone. I guess, you know, we'll try something. I'll get together with my technician and see with, if we can uh, deal with that. But I appreciate that, Joy. Thank you for that. Now, you can, uh, with the notice that I sent you, you can 
go online and you can watch this over and over as much as you want on YouTube. It's right on that notice that I sent you, so it, it'll be up tomorrow. So you can feel welcome to do that. You can ask for any of the handouts uh, that we used today. Just go on and ask, ask for that. I think it has something to punch to ask for it. Or you can just send me an email and, and I will uh, send it to you with the email. Okay. Any other comments or questions in here before we break off? Any comments or questions? We will try and deal with that. I don't know. I don't know if it's the microphone or what it is. Thank you all very much. I appreciate you for coming. And uh, we'll see you next Thursday for another one. Okay? Thank you very much. I see somebody's clapping there. Thank you. I appreciate it. Alrighty. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.